Strawberry fields may not be forever. The EPA phasing out a popular pesticide without providing an effective alternative to protect the fruit from disease, sparking concern over farmers' profits and rising prices for consumers. Is this another unintended consequence of government regulation? Joining me now, Mark Murray. He is a third-generation farmer, and he is president of the California Strawberry Commission. This is a fascinating story, Mark, in that the EPA has come down on you. They want to pull out one pesticide, but you don't have an alternative. Aren't you having conversations right now with fellow growers about how to fix the problem before it gets to the deadline? Yes, Cheryl, definitely. Thanks for having me here. Um, we're definitely in serious um, discussions right now. As a, as a farmer, we're faced with uh, many um, unpredictable elements in, in what we do, and, and um, the regulatory layers um, between U.S. EPA and, and the California Department, you know, Cal EPA, has created these layers that really give um, farmers a lot of angst and uncertainty in, for the future. It's very difficult to plan um, and put your farm plan together, and it's very difficult to see a future um, for the next generations of farmers in this country. Well, how is this hurting farming now? Are you seeing increased competition for Mexican farmers because they see an opportunity here? Uh, they can use the pesticides that by 2015 you cannot. Is, is that the worry here, the concern? Well, I think that's that's a concern, but I think we really keep keep our concerns very close to home where our yields can be severely impacted by 50 percent. And with um, the increased need to show a viable business to the banking industry and, um, you know, to our customers that serve the consumers. We have to show that we can produce a crop of food, of strawberries, uh, consistently and safely. And I think um, our California growers are definitely working hard to to meet that challenge, but it's um, it's a it's a difficult one. Mark, you know, I have to say, as as, a, as a, someone that lived in California for years, I was actually surprised to find out that strawberry production is now more valuable as a commodity in California than lettuce production. It's a 2.4 billion dollar, 2.2 billion dollar industry, at least in 2011. <laughs> Give me a sense of what would happen if you don't resolve this issue with the EPA. What would the value of the industry be? in a year, in two years? Well, the reports say it could be up to a billion dollars even in one year and, you know, thousands of jobs, 25,000 jobs impacted that first year. But I think the unintended consequences are the family farms and those communities around those farms and the farm workers. It's fairly important to understand all of the people that will be impacted. Um, a farm worker has to optimize their day to pay their bills, their rent, their food. The farmers need to plan and create, produce a yield. So all of these um, communities are part of, of um, agriculture are the unattended audiences of, of, of uh, regulations that should really be based in sound science, unbiased analysis of the science and reality. It's very challenging, I know, to, you know, create regulation in Washington or Sacramento. So we welcome those regulators to come to California and get their boots dirty a little and, and see what we're up against. Okay, let me ask you this before I let you go. Methyl bromide, I am not the expert, you are. They want you to phase this out by 2015. In your opinion, is the pesticide safe? Oh, yes, definitely. We have a tremendous track record and regulatory um, process. Every time it's applied, it has to be applied by a licensed applicator. There's a lot of controversy around if this actual compound, um, you know, creates damage to the environment because of the bromines. It's, it's based in bromines, and bromines are coming off the oceans of the world. So one volcano can upset um, the whole apple cart here. You would give your kids strawberries grown if this pesticide was used in the planting process. Your children, you would give the strawberries too. Oh, definitely. That's the highest standard. We, as growers, okay. we hold ourselves to the highest standard, and that's taking home our food uh, to our families. Mark, thank you very much. It's a fascinating topic, and also the issue of jobs. That's a great follow-up story that we're going to have to have with you another time. Mark, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Cheryl.